put your hands together if you love Jesus Christ. Come on, if that was for me, that would be okay. But put your hands together if you love Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Like Tyler, like I said, my name is Trey Walker. I'm the CEO of I Got It Motivational Memories. Uh, but I'm so glad and I'm so honored and so privileged to talk today about experiencing God for the first time. You know, many of us here today, we, we, we go through experiences and we go through changes in life. And sometimes we're very optimistic about it. You know, we're excited. You know, we're, we're happy about the new experience. And sometimes we can be very pessimistic about, about certain situations. But when you experience God for the first time, He'll start to move a change in your life. The first time I had an experience, uh, it wasn't with God, it was a materialistic thing. I came back and I was at the age of eight years old, uh, and my mother being the chef that she is, uh, she used to cook up all types of desserts. And me being who I am, I, I, I would eat them all. I would tear the kitchen up. She couldn't feed me enough. Uh, but every time she cooked a meal, she would always make peach cobbler. Some of y'all folks out there, y'all know what peach cobbler is. Good to your soul. Good to your heart. But at the age of eight, I, I couldn't stand peach cobbler. Every time we had a meal, we had peach cobbler. Fourth of July, mama was going to make a peach cobbler. And I started to get to the point where I said, I can't stand peach cobbler. But I had one problem. It was that I hadn't tried it for myself. <laughs> and so one day I kept on talking. I said, you know, you know I'm tired of y'all eating peach cobbler all the time. And my mom, she said, I have something for you. So I went to bed that night, and, and the next morning I woke up, I smelled something so good in the kitchen. So I rushed downstairs to see what it was, and my mama told me to sit down. She said, boy, sit down, I got something for you. We're going to figure this out today. And so she opens up the oven, and she pulled out a peach cobbler. I looked at her and said, you know I don't like that peach cobbler. Why in the world did you make me a peach cobbler? She said, I'm tired of you talking about it. And so today you're going to experience it for the first time. And if you like it, then great, because we don't have to hear about you talking about it no more. But if you don't, then that's your own personal decision. You know how sometimes we go through experiences in life, and, and we've never been through it, we've never done it before, but we'll talk about it, and, and we'll get in that experience, and we'll say, well, I, I can never see myself doing that, and I, I can't stand doing that. But until we try it for ourselves, sometimes we realize that, that what we once talked about finally starts to change. And so I'm sitting at that table, and got a spoon in my hand and she sets this peach cobbler down and it, it looks like some straight off of a movie. You know, you can see the steam coming up from it. And then you turn around and I looked at the flake on it and, and some of y'all country folk know what I'm talking about. The, the crust on it was so flaky. It looked like she put about three or four, five sticks of butter on it. And I said, oh my God, that peach cobbler don't look like the last ones. So I sat there, I said, okay, mom, grab a spoon, I'm going to eat. She said, no, nah, I want you to wait a minute. And she went to the freezer, she pulled out a big old tub of bluebell ice cream. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know the matter of bluebell tastes just like the good old days. And the bluebell ice cream was so cold, the frog started to come around the tub. I said, oh, my God. She sat on the table next to that peach cob. And so I grabbed my spoon and I... I headed towards that peach cob and I stuck it down in that spoon and I tasted it. I said, oh my goodness, this is the best thing I ever had. I don't know why in the world I ever talked about it. I wasted my breath, but, but I tell you what, today I'm a believer. I, I love it. Every chance they talk about it. And so I didn't stop there. You know, like I said before, we country folks. I took that peach cob and I dipped some out and then I started dipping that spoon in that bluebell ice cream. And I kind of mixed it together. And I stuck it in my mouth and I started eating. I said, oh my God. What has happened in my life? <laughs> and I sat there in that kitchen. I said, from this day forward, if I don't try it, I'm not going to talk about it no more. <laughs> experiences. Experiences of a lifetime. <laughs> and so then time moves forward and time goes on. And I get the opportunity and I get the blessing to play football at Kansas State University. We got some Wildcats out there. One of the baddest boys in the land. Fans out there. But never mind that, never mind that, never mind that. And so I get the opportunity, I get the chance to go play at Kansas State University. And at this point, I feel like my relationship with God was great. I felt like I had one. I felt like I knew God. I started to experience Him so I thought. 
And so I got there and I professed it in my faith. I said, I'm a Christian. I want, I want everybody to know on the team that I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a child of God. And, and I thought I had it all figured out. You know, I'm the son of a well-known pastor here in Kansas. And, and, and I have a great family. And we go to church every Sunday. And some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but we went to church for everything. <laughs> Sunday, we were at church. And Monday, at the trustee meeting, we were at church. If we had choir practice, we went to church. If it was time to sing something, we went to church. If it was somebody's birthday, we went to church. If somebody broke their leg, you better believe it, we were going to church. <laughs> yeah, y'all always in the church. Always. <laughs> and I had fallen in love with the routine of God. I started falling in love with the routine of church. And, All right. and showing up and putting on nice suits and walking in the door and thinking I was okay because of who I was a part of. And the whole time I had no relationship with a man I called Jesus Christ. Some of us, we go to church because our friends go to church. We go to church because it looks good. We go to church because we want to hear the great. We go to church because we want to hear the band and the great, great musicians at church. But I stopped by to tell you, if you get in trouble with the routine, if you fall in love with the routine, then you will never get a relationship with God. Right. relationship. And so I sat there and I got to college and I was telling everybody how I was a Christian. Great teammates like Lockett, my best friend, come up to me and say, you know what, buddy? I'm so glad to see another Christian on the team. Why don't, why don't we go to Bible study and, and why don't we go learn about God? So I said, no, man, I got it. You know, I'm okay. I already know about Daniel and the lion's den. I already know about David and Goliath. You know, y'all go ahead. I'll catch up with y'all. I'm going to go party. Then I had teammates like Colin Klein, and he come up to me, man, and say, we're having 180, we're talking about Jesus Christ. I want you to come be a part of it. I want you to come share the experience. And I said, no, nah, man, I already know about Samson and Delilah. I can name the books of the Bible from A to Z. I think I'm fine. I think I got my relationship. You know, I was ignorant. Sometimes we think we know everything about the Bible, when we really know only two scriptures. Sometimes we think we got it all figured out, but God is really the one that's keeping us when we are a mess. Woo! So I turned around and I just knew I had it figured out. And one day I opened up my eyes just like that and things began to change. And things started to corrupt in my life. Yeah. I looked down on the football field and, and where I once was a freshman All-American, where I was, I was down and fighting for a position on second string. And, and then when I finally got myself back up, I, I got hurt. And I said, Lord, what in the world is going on? And I get in the classroom and my finance teachers and said, I don't know what happened to you. Boy, you can't even add two plus two in. I finally came back out of there and finally got myself straight with classroom and relationships started to tear me up. And I said, God, what is going on? And that's how it is. We get comfortable with our relationship with God. We get comfortable. And when things start to break loose, when all hell starts to break loose in our life, we start to cry out to God as if it's his fault that we're in a mess we're in. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And so I got in my room and the oh, first thing I did was call home. Mama, I gotta holler at you. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know what's going on in my life. Everything is terrible. It's everybody's fault but mine. I don't, I don't know what's, what's going on. If God was really who he said he is, he'd come down and have my back in this situation. <laughs> my mom and daddy got on the phone and said, son, you got to get your relationship with God. And you got to get yourself in check. It was from that day forward, I got down on my knees and said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other way, no other help I know how. It's me, oh God, standing in the need of prayer. Somebody listen to me. Sometimes you got to cry out to God. I know the lights look good in here, and I know the music is sounding good, and I know my buddies right here want to jump up and down, but when all hell is breaking loose in your life, I need you to know how to raise your hand and say, I need you to help me. Woo! Send Gabriel and send Michael down in my life. I need somebody to help me fix this. I heard in his word that he makes all things new. Yes. And he does all things well. Yes, and I remember a peace that surpassed all understanding. It was a presence like I never felt before, an experience of a lifetime. Come in that room and God touched me. And he said, son, I've never left you, but you left me. I don't know about you, but there's been times where I left God. There's been times where I, I strayed away, but you can always come back. Amen. You can always Woo! fix the things that you want to mess up. But Amen. you can't do it by yourself. You got to have God figure it out. And so as I began to pray, I said, God, I need you. 
I don't know how I'm going to get myself out of this situation, but from this day forward, I'm going to walk with you. And I vowed to God that day. I said, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on in my life, and sometimes you have to cry. I said, but I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to trust in your will. Ever since then, I've had some mountaintops and some valleys. But one thing that's remained the same, and that's the love of Jesus Christ. And so with that being said, I want to leave you with a story. It was an atheist. Okay? If you've never seen the movie God's Not Dead, go check it out. Go check it out. You know, it's an atheist, and, and he was going around the world. He was going around the country professing how God wasn't real. He said, "If God is, if God is real, I want you to, I want you to prove it to me. Prove that God is, God is real. I don't believe in Him. I don't know why the world everybody would sit here and, and believe in something that is not real. So if you can prove that God is not real, if you can prove that God is real, excuse me." He said, then, then I'll buy everybody's bank. He's sitting at a bank. He said, I'll buy everybody's sign in. I, you know what? I retired from my job. And, and he started to get pompous. He started to get arrogant. You know, sometimes we feel like we know things. We get arrogant. And, and he started to act the fool. And, and he looked in the back of the room and he saw the janitor back there sweeping the floor. And he said, sir, you know, matter of fact, you, you come up here. You come up here. He said, I want you to prove to me that there is a God. And if you can prove to me that there's a God, I, I'll let you quit your day job and, and I'll give you my resume, I'll give you my salary. So the gentleman put a smile on his face. He started walking to the front of the room. And when he walked to the room, he said, sir, I would love to prove to you that God is real. He said, but I'm gonna need your help with a demonstration. So he walked to the guy standing next to him. He said, sir, can I borrow the orange in your hand? And as the man brought the orange in his hand, he began to peel the orange. He began to say, how great mm. <laughs> is our God. Say with me, how great is our God. Come on. And all will sing, how great, how great is our God. And he kept on peeling the orange and he got down to the end. I can't finish my orange. <laughs> but he got down to the end. And he said, sir, you said if I can prove to you that God is real. He said, you would change my salary. You would give me a brand new job and you would give me a brand new start. He said, so I want to do one thing. And the man bit an orange just like this. Bit an orange. He, says, Look, he looked at the atheist and said, sir, can you tell me whether or not this orange was bitter or if it was sweet? He said, you don't know all this talking, but, but you seem to know everything. But can you tell me whether or not this orange was bitter or if it was sweet? Atheist set that puzzle. He said, I, I don't know. I don't know what I know. I don't know what I know if, if that orange is bitter or sweet. I haven't tried. Hey. <laughs> he said, that's the very same question I'm going to ask you. How do you know if God is not real if you haven't tried him for yourself? I know we're at a little great concert and I'm gonna hurry up so he can get on stage. But I'll tell you this. All of these lights in here are fine, the music is great, and the atmosphere is wonderful with all of you believers in here today. But when the lights turn off and Lecrae packs his bags and go back up to Atlanta, Georgia, and you get home and you look yourself in the mirror, ask yourself honestly, is God real to me? Look at yourself and say, do, do I really have a relationship? with him or was I just there because because it was fun to go to because it was just another concert with that being said I have one last question for you this one's I just bit in was it bitter or was it sweet God bless you